And so um, for someone who is um, yeah. in, 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 in the property industry, what are those things that you guys could say um, have changed because of technology? Um, okay. I think one, one of the tools that I'll, I'll, I'll just zone into a bit is obviously the, the company that I'm a part of, which is Property Inspect. Welcome to the Private Property Podcast. My name is Tumi, and if you are seeing my face for the first time, then welcome to the podcast that brings you everything property related. We are talking investing, we are talking buying, selling, and whatever it is in the property industry that you need. We bring you experts who are going to give us on the past information that will help you make decisions to ultimately grow your property portfolio. Tonight we are talking um, new opportunities that are ha- that are taking place in the property technology space, and I'm joined by Brian Sango, who's going to be taking us through this. Brian is the strategic partnerships and sales manager in Property Inspect. Brian, good evening and welcome. Hi, good evening. Hi, how are you? Thank you so much for having me. It is an ultimate pleasure. Thank you so much for for agreeing um, to talk to us tonight. So, yeah, yeah. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Can you okay, hear me? So I can hear yeah. you clearly. Awesome. So kicking off our conversation tonight, technology is one of those things that is just really accelerating, you know, globalization and the way the world um, does its things. It's changed so much for us. And um, I just want to know from your perspective, uh, for someone who is in strategic partnerships and, and really sales, how has um, technology changed your day-to-day um, operations? Okay. Um, yeah, no, I mean, you're, you're absolutely right. Technology is is a topic that's uh, been doing the rounds for quite some time. Uh, it's it's certainly changed quite a lot because one thing technology does, especially well, generally as well as in the property space, is technology helps streamline a number of operations, helps automate systems, and essentially helps save a lot of time. So people are starting to really move away from manual processes that they were using before and are adopting more of uh, your, your paperless solutions or, or, or mobile app-driven applications that they can use within the property space to perform various roles. Um, and yeah, especially during when we went into COVID and a number of people had limitations around movement and, and interactions with, with other people or with colleagues, uh, they definitely then uh, saw the importance of, of such platforms and tools to use. So yeah, it's been it's been it's been a good time for us as a company, and I think it's just been a good time for the industry as a whole in terms of migrating from how we're doing things to to this new way of doing things for for a number of us. Yeah, cool. So for the benefit of of. Um, our family watching us, our private property family watching, um, just talk to us about some of those processes that you guys have migrated um, onto the technology space. Just a couple of days ago, we spoke about how um, the pandemic changed um, um, the the property Mm -hmm. auction spaces. And one of the biggest things was that, oh, now they can do things online, they can move the auctions online. So um, for someone who is um, in in the property industry, what are those things that you guys could say um, have changed because of technology? technology um okay i think one one of the tools that i'll 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 just zone into a bit is obviously the the company that i'm a part of which is property inspect and what we are it's it's a mobile application and software that any entity that does property inspections would use so you name it from valuations to 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 rental agents that do move in about inspections uh, now, with the Property Practitioners Act that is coming to play, uh, you have certain inspections that you need to do or to carry out your due diligence when you are um, filling out your disclosure form just before you sign a rental mandate or just before a property is sold. And as opposed to walking into a property like a number of people would do for many, many years with the pen and paper, clipboard and file, someone's just ticking things and then they take photos. They get back to the office, 
that have to put all that, consolidate all that information into an Excel spreadsheet. We've done away completely with that. All you simply walk into the property with is your mobile device, which is customized depending on whatever inspection that it is that you are carrying out. And, and you're taking photos and um, it enables you to take photos. It enables you to take videos. You've got a voice to text functionality. It works fully offline. So connectivity is never an issue. And uh, it allows for any parties, be it the tenant, the owner, the landlord, they can sign digitally using their finger. And at the click of a button, those reports are automatically created and distributed to intended recipients. So that's, that's, that's really a game changer globally because now that just enables people to be able to, to carry out inspections much quicker. Uh, for, for banks that are using us, it, it means the turnaround time for them to be able to, to grant finance for, for various mortgage applications is much shorter as well because they are getting the necessary data sent back to them timelessly. Um, so yeah, that's just one. And then you've obviously got a, a number of other tools like for, for any signing of documents, we, we've got HelloSign, we've got DocuSign that a number of people in the industry use. Uh, this was also very widely used, especially during lockdown, where people could not necessarily meet for signing of offer to purchases or of lease agreements and so forth. Um, you've got automated platforms, you know, the likes, there's a company out there called Rios. Uh, they, they are a payment platform and a property management platform that has also come into, into play to just streamline how, how the payment process happens between tenants and landlords receiving and, and, and vice versa when they have to pay back deposits and so forth. So, so that's, that's another uh, big one that's in the space. Uh, we've got Flow Living, which is just um, bridging the gap between social media uh, advertising and how the traditional advertising model for real estate agencies was working. And, and they've been doing a lot in terms of automating that, and that helps towards, you know, lead generation. And I think lastly, uh, another one that I will mention now, I mean, there are lots, uh, and I'm so glad to say this because it's very encouraging for us who are part of the industry to see so many startups and, and so many companies thriving in the prop tech space. But the last one is uh, around tenant issue reporting and, and maintenance ticketing. So now I'm a tenant, I'm sitting here in my property, uh, I, I have an issue, my geezer has burst, I don't have to pick up the phone or send an email. All I simply do is go onto my phone, I, I log that query, which will automatically shoot off to my property management company that handles this property. And once it's received there, it'll create a maintenance ticket, which will again be automatically assigned to the contractor who's responsible for that. So a water issue will go to the plumber, an electrical issue would straight away go to the electrician and it triggers them to also be able to then put together a quotation that they send back to the agent, allowing them to approve or decline. So that whole process has, has become much, much easier than it used to be before. You would, you would sit two months waiting for your landlord to address an issue that, that's happened in your property. Yeah. Nice. Um, I like the fact that you said game changers because from how you're explaining them, they really do sound like game changers and sound like something that would really elevate um, the industry and just, you know, put it on a different whole benchmark together, even for the country. So zooming into now yeah. adoption, yeah. let's talk about adoption. How does the adoption rate look for, for these different um, apps that you're talking about? Some of them that you mentioned, um, I'm quite familiar with them. I've seen them um, uh, maybe when I was moving from one place to the other. Um, but let's talk about yeah. overall adoption because um, this industry also has has a vast majority of people. And when I mean majority of people, I mean uh, in terms of the people. It's, it legit looks even like silos because the, you either have people who've been in the industry for over 30, 40 years who still believe in doing things traditionally. Yeah. But you now have the younger right. generation that's coming in. And, you know, even these the, the people who are in the middle have sort of adopted this, um, the traditional way of doing things. So how does the adoption look and what are the, those tactics that you guys are currently using? Um, and when I mean you guys, I mean the people in the industry to, to start <laughs> reeling everybody in, you know, to start showing them this new way of doing things and digitizing. 
Yeah. Um, no, adoption has, has certainly uh, been a, a, a challenge in a way, or or rather, challenge is negative. It's, it's been quite interesting to note how, how the adoption takes place. So I, I guess from my expertise, um, being part of a global offering, because we actually in 44 countries worldwide already, and when, when you look into the African market and then obviously closer to home, when you look at South Africa, I think adoption is always strongly um, uh, influenced by our price sensitivity. So we're obviously an economy that has a bit of challenges here and there. Uh, a number of people, you know, the general consensus is always uh, I need to keep my running or operational costs at the bare minimum without necessarily compromising what it is that I need to do. Um, and, and what they normally now do is they've got this hierarchy of, of offerings that they would, uh, in an ideal world, want to jump on. But anything that falls lower on the list, they'll normally just find a, a manual way of doing it. So certain applications or certain systems where they feel, oh, you know what, my Excel spreadsheet is still the best way to, to, to do my, 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 my accounting, then they've done away with that. So convincing people to obviously, convincing a price sensitive market uh, for them to not look at it as a cost, but look at it as a value that they're adding to their business is, is still a challenge that a number of companies are obviously trying to navigate around. That's one. Uh, the other big thing, I like the fact that you mentioned that we've, our industry is made up of, of you know, uh, some people who've been in the game for quite some time and, and a fair mix of, of some millennials, you know, our peers. I think our peers and millennials generally to them that are more um, obviously have you know TikTok, we have uh, Facebook. We understood Facebook way before uh, a, a number of the other guys, and and so with them or with us rather, we we embrace technology far far better than than um, our our other fellow people within the industry. And so yeah, price sensitivity and trying to get people that have been doing things a certain way for decades um, to say, listen, what you've known for 40 years and what you've perfected, do away with that. Here's an easier solution uh, that's going to cost you a bit that you need to move to. So doing that is not easy. Um, and it's it's always, you, you need to come in with a value proposition as opposed to just coming and saying, this is what we have. Because once they see the value in it, once they see the benefits of migrating from a manual system onto a technological platform or technological offering, then they'll at least open up their eyes and start to appreciate what it is that you're trying to bring into the equation. No, definitely. Um, and my next question is that with digitization, people already start thinking this is going to be costly, this is going to be expensive. How feasible is it in terms of cost, in terms of efficiency and productivity? Yeah. Because there might be downtime because people don't really understand these technologies and um, can use them properly. So what is your view in yeah. terms of us um, bringing these in? How feasible are they um, in terms of the property industry? Yeah. Um, I think one, one major aspect that normally is a key driver is um, obviously informing as best as possible your, your target client or what it is that you have to offer, um, taking them through uh, a demo of what it looks like, maybe as much as giving them a free trial so they can walk the walk themselves and actually see what the whole process entails. And, and then uh, once you've done that, it's, it's holding their hand throughout the process. So, and by holding their hand, what I mean by that is just being able to be there to support them. So it, it, it will be definitely difficult to encourage a market to buy something off the shelf and say, Here, here's a system, take it, run with it, and you know, go out there and, and teach yourself, show yourself the ropes and so forth. But if you are actually holding their hand, you've got... 24 seven support that you're offering them. Maybe you've got like a helpline or a little chat bot that can, uh, um, you know, respond to their queries uh, on time. 
that that will definitely help as well because you want them to to know that they've got the support the necessary support that they need and that they deserve which is why a number of products like in Australia and the US that try that sell um, their offerings um, to the South African market they are not well received in South Africa sp- uh, especially because most of those either have only representation in the or, uh, country of origin so now you you have to wait for them to respond to your email uh, because calling them might be a bit too costly etc but now for companies that are within South Africa where they have someone you can sit down with face to face or you can pick up a phone and know that Brian's going to be on the other end of the call that's easier for for people to to trust that's easier it it just nudges people a bit more for them to say oh okay these guys are going to hold my hand therefore these guys are going to help me prove this concept because uh because they are there all the time so subscription based systems will obviously work better as opposed to a once off and now once it's subscription based and you're paying monthly it means there has to be some form of involvement uh from whatever the service provider is and it justifies them also being able to be there to support you throughout the way definitely definitely thank you so much for that um and as you said earlier is and so i think it's 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 in us following that same approach that we see that technology is really here to help us and really here to grow um whatever whatever we are currently busy with and in this case it is the property industry and making sure that those property portfolios grow you know those sales keep coming in and we just strengthen our processes and each and every single thing that we are currently doing in that space brian thank you so much for joining us um the review views on social media everybody's already saying this info- this information is really necessary and that technology they actually really share your same sentiment so thank you so much for for coming through and we really appreciate it have a good evening no, thank you so much for having me and yes a good evening to you too thank you So that brings us to the end of today's episode. Thank you so so much for getting to this part of the live broadcast and if you are joining us on the Twitter spaces, do ensure that you keep coming back every weekday at 7 p.m. so that you can hear the the on the pass information around the property industry. My name is Dumi WMJ and thank you so much for joining us tonight. Have a good one.